So nutrition basics. Let's talk first about the first thing that all of you can do, and go home and do today. You can look through your cupboards, you can look for these additives, and you can avoid them, and you can take them completely out of the diet. And this is great for all of your children and everyone in your family. So things like artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives, these are very difficult to process, and if your detoxification and sulfation systems aren't working well, these can be really difficult. And there was work done by a doctor, Dr. Ben Feingold in San Francisco, where we are back in the 70s, who did some research on this and saw that these ingredients were creating hyperactivity in children. And then more and more we're learning that they can create migraines. Uh, many of my clients might have a child on the spectrum, but dad gets migraines. and lo and behold, you take out some of these artificial ingredients and they tend to go away. MSG. MSG is an additive that's used as a flavor enhancer. And so you can, it can say no preservatives on the package, but if it's not a preservative, it's a flavor enhancer, so it gets a little sneaky. And the big challenge with these foods, these are in things like Anything that tastes meaty or cheesy, and some of the biggest offenders are the artificial meat products, like the vegetarian type meat products, as well as any kind of sauce, gravy, stock, chicken stocks, soups, very high often in MSG. And companies don't want you to, they know people don't want MSG, and so what they do is they hide it under names like hydrolyzed vegetable protein, hydrolyzed soy protein, autolyzed yeast, yeast extract, those types of things. And so you may not even be aware unless you're aware of these ingredients. And the big problem with this, these ingredients is MSG is monosodium glutamate, Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. So when you get more of these, you often create a lot of hyperactivity and excitability. And then an inability for the body to do its natural calming mechanism with the GABA response. So you get a lot of hyperactivity and little ability to calm oneself. Pesticides are known to be toxic and harmful to brain function. Aspartame and other artificial sweeteners, we really want to avoid these. Aspartame has a similar effect to MSG, and both of MSG and aspartame can do what we call, quote, excite neurons to death. There's work by a doctor named Blaylock who wrote a book called Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills, a really fascinating study. He's, a, I believe, a, a neurosurgeon or some, something of that sort. Trans fats, getting rid of these trans fat, these hydrogenated fats, and we're going to go into all of the good fats and the wonderful fats we need. And these trans fats really compete and do a lot of harm to all those good fats we're trying to take in. Excessive and refined sugar, a lot of children on the autism spectrum have yeast overgrowth, often from antibiotics, and sugar just feeds that yeast. And they often have a lot of sugar cravings because of that. Nitrates and nitrites in meats, lunch meat products and things. And the good news is that you can find lots of products that don't contain these additives. And the one thing about this is that you can go to any store and find a substitute that's free of these. So even if you didn't change and get rid of the candy and get rid of the chips, I hope you do, but even if you didn't, just doing this, just starting here, often has a profound impact, especially with children with ADHD and that sort of thing, just this alone. And you can go to any store and find an equal substitute free of these ingredients. They often use them because they're really inexpensive. So you may need to pay a little more for the product, but it's well worth it. A healthy diet. So a healthy diet is going to be whole foods, unrefined, unprocessed. So when I think of that, I think of how you know, when you think of a food, did this come straight from the farm? Is it a tomato that I can use in something? Is it a whole grain that I can make something with? Or is it highly processed and packaged and refined and, and sitting on the shelf for a long time? Organic, if you can get, any time you can get organic, it's really beneficial. And if you have trouble finding certain organic things, there's a list of, quote, dirty dozen that the, I believe it's the EPA puts out, it's, it, it's in my book as well, of some of the most important ones, like strawberries, to really find organic, some of the ones with the most pesticides. Fermented foods, this may be new to some people, Fermented foods are things like yogurt, the lactobacillus, that good bacteria that populates the gut and really helps with digestion. That's a pretty common one, but if we're not doing dairy, where else do we get those probiotic sources? So we're gonna talk about that. And then the quality of meat. What I feel is, I study what I call holistic nutrition, a way of looking at the quality of the food, of the 
good nutrients in the food and the avoidance of certain toxins. How can we get the body to function optimally and quality is essential? It can make the difference between a healthy food and an unhealthy food. And we're going to talk about good quality meat and things like grass-fed or pastured animal foods. We're going to talk a lot about good fats. Good fats are essential for the brain as well as pretty much every system of the body. And then a, di a healthy diet is one that's free of food intolerances, and we'll get into that as well. Again, quality is something we're going to stress over and over again. So fats. Fats are one of my favorite conversations because in the mainstream, they're often villainized as bad. And often we hear we want to keep fat low. We want a low-fat diet. Well, I don't believe that that's true for any humans, I especially do not think that's true for children. Children need fat. It's essential for their brain, their brain growth, their brain development, pregnant women, and as well as all of us. We need that. Every cell of the body is lined in good fats. And if we have those, we can let nutrients in, insulin in, blood sugar in. We can get everything in and out of the cell to, to nourish it as we need to. And also just the, all of the important things on hormone balance, energy regulation. It can even help with fat burning. People often think, oh, I need to do low fat if I want to lose weight. Well, actually, certain types of fats can help burn fat. So how can we use quality? I'm not talking about going and eating a bunch of fried foods. I'm talking about good quality fats. And reducing inflammation. A fat can be inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. So how can we get some of those good fats? There's several sources. The one that we most commonly hear that we need to boost up is something called omega-3, and that's because it's fairly difficult to find in our diet, especially with all of the mercury in fish. And the people that are choosing not to eat so much fish, it's, it tends to be a little difficult. So fish oils, f uh, flax oil or flax seeds, and different types of uh, fish oil supplements and things are good ways to get some of that omega-3 into the system. Omega-6s, we often get plenty of this, with the exception of a little omega-6 compound called GLA. Sometimes people will especially supplement with that particular fatty acid. And that's something that if you're working with a practitioner, they can help you figure out which types of fatty acids might be best for your child. You want to avoid the highly refined fats, the ones like canola oil, soybean oil. Those are highly processed. They're processed and then they, they, they deodorize them and they bleach them and they add all sorts of chemicals. They're also, they oxidize very quickly. They tend to be in big, large containers, clear containers where the light is causing oxidation. Anytime you oxidize a fat, you have to use your good antioxidants, your vitamin C and all of those good things you're trying to take in to neutralize the damage done by these rancid oils. So best to avoid them when you can. If you need something, a good grape seed oil or something that's unrefined is good, as well as the omega-9s, the things like the monounsaturated fats like olive oil and those types of oils are great ways to get some good unrefined virgin, extra virgin olive oils in the diet. Nuts and seeds are another source of kind of a combination of threes and uh, sixes and nines, excuse me. And saturated fat, and I want to talk a lot about saturated fat because that's also something that's not talked about. Coconut oil is an example of of saturated fat. And there's animal fats, there's animal saturated fats like bacon and butter. There's also plant-based saturated fats like coconut oil, which do, don't contain cholesterol because only animals contain cholesterol. But we're actually going to talk about cholesterol and it's not a, a bad thing either. So typically we want to get 30% fat in our diet, 30% of calories from fat in our diet. Many children actually do well with even more fat, sometimes 40% or more fat, but you'll have to figure out for your child. And if your child's been on a lower fat diet, you want to go slowly and you want to see. There are, there are children that can't process fat so well, and those might be if you have high oxalates or gallbladder or bile insufficiencies, maybe enzyme insufficiencies, those types of things are going to require maybe a little bit lower fat or going more slowly and figuring it out as you go. But breast milk is 53% fat, 25% saturated fat. So we can see the need for infants and children to get that good fat as well as that saturated fat in their diet.